Hello everyone, my name is Sri, and my partner is Jessica. Today we will present about the phylum Baronida. The species are small, warm light animals. They have about 10 species. Uh, their name means bearing nest. They are silomate and triploblastic, and their system is bilateral. These animals usually live in benthic substrate under shallow coastal water, especially in temperate sea. They secrete a lettery or kindness tube to life free. And these tubes usually anchor singly, or they could be tangled in mass on rock shell piling or in the sand. They look for four or got tentacle and they thirst these tentacles out for feeding. When these animals are disturbed or threatened, the tentacle will withdraw inside the tube. The body plan. An adult foronid range between 1 and 25 cm in length. Their body is vermiform with little regional specialization. They have a slit mouth between the local coral ridges and overlaid by epistomy. Um, during metamorphosis, the mouth and anus was are brought very close together by rabbit crow and enlargement of ventral surface. The dorsal surface is reduced to a, a small area between the mouth and anus. Uh, therefore, their body was separate into a local floral end and a stomachic end. Also, during metamorphosis, the tentacles are remodeled in some species, but in other, the tentacles are shed. The body wall of phrenid include an epidermis of columnar cells overlaid by a very thin cuticle. Inside the epidermis, it has sensory neurons and various gland cells. These gland cells are responsible for producing mucus and chitin. The epidermis of local four is densely ciliated. The body support is provided by the hydrostatic body of silomic chambers and by the tube. They are muscle inside the body wall, but they are usually weak. The tentacles of local four are hollow, and each contain a blind ended blood vessel. The tentacles are in double row, arising from two ridges in a circle or in a spiral. The ridges lie close to one another and form a narrow food groove. Foronid a ciliary mucus suspension feeder. Uh, the local poro cilia create a water current. Food then travel to this current and trap in mucus lining. And then the food particle are moved to the mouth by cilia. The digestive tract of a foronid is U-shaped. Going from mouth to anus, it is simple and not coy. The majority of digestive tract is apparently derived from endoderm, with exception for the anus and the initial formation of the larvae intestine. Some parts of the digestive tract are muscular, but they are weak. The food movement is by ciliary action. Okay, so uh, moving on to circulation, gas exchange, and excretion. Main thing about circulation, we have a closed system. We have two main blood vessels, the afferent and the efferent. The afferent is going to branch out to supply for uh, blood the whole organism. And this is going to go through the local area to the stomach area. So from 
all the way up here to here is where we're gonna have our system. And then we're gonna have gas exchange taking place uh, at the top. If you're looking at the picture at your right, uh, all the way at the top, we have the tentacles of the local force. And then uh, we also need to, you know, this also this waste, any waste material is gonna come out through uh, nephra the force. The nervous system for these organisms, uh, they do have a central nervous system, which have different components, just because they do have like a head-like structure, but they do not have a cerebral ganglion. And this is because they, uh, they have a sedentary lifestyle and they do have low cephalization. So uh, they do have their layer of nerves they can feel, and uh, this layer of nerves is gonna uh, be within the epidermis and the circular muscle layer. And this uh, motor of neurons is gonna extend inward to the muscle layer. Uh, now for reproduction and development, we have that these organisms can reproduce through a sexual transfer fission or form of budding. So they could go through fertilization uh, by a sexual, like either or, but at the end, they're gonna have their larvae uh, and this larvae is gonna develop very similar within the same the same phyla. Then we have that they are able to regenerate any body part that they can lose. So meaning that if lo they lose um, one extremity, they could like rebuild it. And then we have both gonochoristic and hermaphroditic. So we have the male and the female, or we have uh, one organism with both uh, reproductive systems. So for foreigners uh, in their life cycle, we do have that they, their developing is a little bit different from species to species. But in general, they are gonna have uh, spermatophores and they're gonna travel floor close to the ovary or however these uh, spermatophores are gonna meet the ovary and fertilization is gonna take pl place at the end. And then we're gonna have a larvae. So all um, species are gonna have their larvae and this larvae is gonna go through a whole process of uh, metamorphosis which is where the adult is gonna develop that uh, characteristic where their mouth area is gonna come like closed, closer to the anus. So that's one of the main characteristic of the adult. And then uh, the embryos have relatively short planktonic life, meaning uh, that they develop uh, relatively close, uh, fast. Sorry, they develop relatively fast. So here's your question number one. Please stop the video, read the question, and I'll show you the answer in a little bit. So here it is. What this is the process where the mouth bearing and anus bearing are brought closer together in the adult. So our question number two, same, same thing. Uh, pause the video, try to answer, and I'll give you the answer at the end. So the component of the epidermis that is responsible for the production of mucus and the chitin is the gland cell. Really important, I think. Thank you, and that is it.